When you need to get a likeness of someone or something, you need a reference. Selfie time. Go to your phone right now and find an image that you really like and a reference photo with more contrast will give more depth and character to your painting. So bump up that contrast. If you don't have an app to create a deeper contrast, try doing this. Print out an image of your photo and highlight the areas that you want to make more dark and more light or in this case the areas that you want to make a little more abstract. By eliminating the colours on the printout, you have a blank slate, so to speak. So here's the semi-abstract stylized drawing that I created from my photograph. I've created clear outlines and boundaries as to where I want to put my colour. A scanned and scaled down version of the original drawing will help me to create some thumbnails in my sketchbook. Again, if you don't have a computer handy, use the tried and tested old-fashioned method of using grids to scale up and scale down. Here's an example of how to do that. There are many ways of scaling and transferring a drawing, uh, so if you're interested, let me know in the comments below and I will do a dedicated video for you. Next thing is to decide on your color palette. I want to use a limited color palette. The great way to choose palettes is to use a color wheel. Here I have one and I can actually look at opposing colors and colors that are next to each other, what they call analogous colors, and decide what I want to use. So I've decided what I want in all of the portraits is black and gold. I'm going to use colored pencils and a gold marker to establish the first two colors, but I want to keep the palette limited and decide from there which uh, colors I want to use for my finished portrait. So let's do some more. So there we have it, my limited color palette selection. Let's go. So guys, we have progress. I'm actually really getting into doing work in my sketchbook. In my video on understanding the creative process, I actually got really into drawing in a sketchbook and I did a lot of detailed drawings on the legendary and inspirational Bob Marley. Uh, so if you haven't seen that video about the creative process, okay, insert thumbnail about here. Please check it out. I really got into the spirit of things and did a two page spread. Drawing in a spiral bound sketchbook is just fine and I have a lot of them. But when you draw in a stitch to include bound sketchbook that you can draw on both sides of the page and make it into one continuous drawing, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. Now I'm really enjoying using sketchbooks. I'm converted. I no longer have that fear. Colored pencils are especially useful for blending. I'm layering layers of browns and yellows just to get that sort of a golden shade. For the very last thumbnail, I decided to use my gold pen and I suddenly realized why I hadn't used it in this particular sketchbook because it tends to scrape and rips the paper a little. On the swatches, this particular marker works just fine. It's a good idea to try out your paint and markers on different types of papers just to make sure that you don't get any surprises once you go to do the finished drawing or painting. On my very last thumbnail, I decided to use my watercolour and this made the process so much quicker. So let's quickly fill out the other colours. The images here are actually a little bit elongated and they need to fit into a tall rectangle. So remember, you can exaggerate a little bit. This is such a fun way to actually decide on colours and drawings and what you want the finished drawing to look like. As you sketch out, draw and plan your thumbnails, you'll be surprised at how many innovative techniques you come up with. Once you've got your image and your framework down pat, 
you can break the boundaries a little bit and this is an opportunity with small sketches and thumbnails just to feel free to experiment. Thumbnails completed, I now have four different colours from which to choose for my large painting. So for shoe convenience, I decided to do the painting on paper. So much more convenient because I don't have to find space to store large canvases. With the look and colours already decided, it's going to make the final painting so much easier to execute. So if you've ever thought about doing a portrait, start with you, start with yourself and then you can paint everybody else. Go ahead, create a portrait. It's an opportunity to do a really detailed study of a person, you. You can have fun, experiment and play around with that masterpiece that you already are. In fact, I challenge you to do your own self-portrait. I look forward to seeing the results. So, what do you think? My finished abstract painting. Do you like it? Ready to hang? Well, hmm, let's see. Ah, decisions, decisions. As you can see, my loves, I did more than one version of the same painting. True to form. Okay, so here is version two. Do you like this one? So which one did I decide to put on my wall? Okay, yes, that one, because it goes so much with my decor and with the blank page next to it. But, you know what, finally, I've started to fill those frames. So guys, go ahead and start your portrait. Start with the person in the mirror. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe and share. Wishing you much love. Peace.